next presentation uh, is uh, connecting REST APIs resources with Kiwi by uh, Hemlata Sharma from Connexis. Um, so, Hello. yeah, I hope I help you. So, yeah, Hemlata um, graduated with a master's degree in computer science from Trinity College, Dublin. She is now data scientist and backend developer at Connexis. Last year, she became a certified Kubernetes application development. Uh, the research efforts include building applications that helps connect data in isolated containerized REST APIs. So, Hemata, uh, welcome and uh, please uh, share your presentation. Yes, thank you. Um... Well, I hope you guys can see my screen. Yeah, we see your presentation. We see you. All okay. Good. Okay, great. I'll start. Um, hello, like you said, my name is Hemlata, and I'll be presenting uh, Kiwi today. But before I get into that, again, I will just quickly introduce myself. Um, um, I was born in a small remote village in the Himalayan Valley, and uh, I grew up loving math. And when I learned to write code, I also liked writing code. Um, then I went on to get a master's from Trinity College Dublin, after which I joined Connexus. And my work here involves I've built ML pipelines. I have also built other data transformation pipelines. Um, here I also became a Kubernetes certified uh, application developer. And more recently, I have been working on Kiwi. And Kiwi is what I will be presenting at the moment. So Kiwi um, is an application that connects um, data. But before we get into what Kiwi is and how Kiwi does what it does, um, let's answer a very important question. And this question here is, why connect data in the first place? What is, um, what is the end objective here? And there are many uh, important reasons why we should connect data. Uh, but one of the most important, one of these important reasons is um, to build non-linear um, CI/CD pipeline in um, multidisciplinary multi engineering contexts. Now, when you have a standalone project, as in if you have a project that does not depend on any other components other than itself, in that case, um, linear CI CD pipelines work great. Here on the top um, right uh, is an example of a linear CI CD pipeline. And here we can see that every step only depends on the step before it. In multidisciplinary contexts, however, where your project is composed of several um, smaller software projects, uh, the case is different. Now, on the bottom right here is a small example where there's a project, and this project is composed of um, three different components. And the, these components are requirement, test case, and simulation model. And here the test case um, has a status, and the status depends um, on the simulation model and the requirement. In this case, it is pass, and it's only pass because um, the requirement confirms to the simulation model. Now, what can happen is that a requirement could change. And if a requirement does change, then the test case should be reevaluated and uh, so that it stays up to date. And this is why we need um, nonlinear CI CD pipeline, because here test case is dependent on two other components. Non, um, this is a very simple example. You can have bi-directional relationships, you can also have circular effects, uh, circular relationships between projects. And so multi, um, so non-linear CI CD pipelines in these scenario help you achieve faster automation, faster error detection, and of course, feedback loops, like I explained. Um, now here we have Kiwi. Kiwi does connect data, but specifically what Kiwi connects is the resources um, in REST APIs only. And uh, it connects these resources without any modification to the REST API. Uh, my second point here says that Istio um, is uh, inspired by Istio's um, Kiwi, is inspired by Istio service mesh architecture and is built on Kubernetes. Um, the technical details of Kiwi, I will get on to the, this part later in the presentation. But first, I would want to, I want to give you guys a um, demo. Um, in this demo, what we'll try and do is we will um, achieve two goals. First, we will try and connect um, um, resources in isolated REST APIs. And second, we will see um, if we can build a CI CD pipeline on top of these connected resources um, that KDE has connected. So now um, these are our resource types that we will try and to connect, that we will try to connect today. 
These resource types are requirement, test case, and simulation model. The relationship um, that exists between these resources um, is seen on the slide. Again, just like the example before, the test case has a status, and this status can be pass or fail. It is passed only if um, the simulation model results are as per the requirement. Now we know our resources. We have three resources and these resources, since we have three different resource types, for each of our resource type, uh, we have um, our APIs. So we have three APIs. We have um, a simulation API that exposes only simulation resources. Um, we have a requirement API that only exposes requirement resources and uh, Lastly, we have a test case API that only exposes um, test case resources. I will uh, introduce our APIs one by one. And um, so we'll start with our first um, API that is the simulation API. Uh, for our demo today, uh, we'll be using a very simple simulation model, um, the bouncing ball simulation model. And this model is um, provided by Modelica. So here I've simulated this model. And when I press play, I hope you guys can see it, that a ball bounces. Yeah, we see. Oh, great, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and we can set other parameters. We can um, set some initial parameters, like the initial height for this ball. Let's change it to maybe 14 and simulate the model again. And then when, when we press play, the ball bounces from a high, higher height. Um, beneath the simulation, we see a height to time graph. Now, this graph gives you the height of the ball with respect to time. Just as the height of the ball changes with respect to time, so does the velocity of the ball. And when we want, uh, if we want these height and velocity vectors uh, with time, with respect to time, then luckily, uh, Modelica also provides a post endpoint for us to get these vectors. Um, let's look at this post endpoint. This tool uh, that I'm using here, it's, it's called Insomnia, and uh, it's, a rest, it's an API client uh, that I will use throughout the demo to interact with um, APIs. So this here is the post endpoint, um, and in the in this uh, endpoint, I'm sending the initial height of the ball. And here we get a response. We get trajectories, and of this we get um, time, and we also get the velocity trajectory. Now this velocity trajectory will be the basis of our simulation model. Why that is? That is because our simulation API has um, five different bouncing ball simulation models. And for each model, the initial height of the ball is different. So that means that for each simulation, the velocity trajectory varies because the initial height of the ball is different. Let's um, do a get at this endpoint and look at our first um, simulation resource. And when we do a send here, we get um, an initial height uh, for this, for the first resource is 98. Yeah, here we have the um, velocity vector for this uh, model and these uh, vectors have got and uh, these the, all of this data we've got from the modelica post endpoint let's look at another simulation um, resource and here we see for the second simulation resource um, the initial height is three like this we have five different um, simulation resources next um, is our requirement api and um, our requirement api also has five requirement resources um, let's have a look I'm doing a get to the requirement API endpoint to see all of the resources. And here we have our um, requirement resources. So our requirement um, resources have some properties. These properties are about title, identifier, and uh, time and velocity. Um, of these properties, the most important properties we have here uh, the, that is unique to requirement is time and velocity. What these properties mean here is that at time t, the requirement is such that the velocity should be v. So for the first resource, what we are trying to do here is that we expect the velocity of the ball um, to be minus 1.17 and 0 0.12 seconds. Um, like this. Similarly, uh, we also have five requirement resources. Next uh, is our test case API. This probably is the simplest of our APIs. Um, let's look at all these resources all at once. Yes. So here we have five test case resources, and um, it also has similar properties like our requirement resources. 
um, it has about title identifier and it has two other properties that is description and status. Um, it's important to note here that right now all the test case statuses are empty and they are empty because right now these test cases are not linked to anything. So it doesn't make sense for them to have a status. Later when we link them, uh, we will see that um, they have a status. Um, so right now we've seen our resources in our APIs and all of these resources are isolated in their own APIs. So how do we connect these resources with each other? And the answer to this is the Kiwi proxy. So the Kiwi proxy um, is also an API. And what, it, what the Kiwi proxy does is it runs parallel to each of our APIs. Meaning for a simulation API, there exists a Kiwi proxy. There's a Kiwi proxy for our requirement API and there's a Kiwi proxy for our test case API. And um, each Kiwi proxy exposes link creation and link discovery endpoints for its own API. Meaning this Kiwi proxy here, it exposes link creation and link discovery for only the simulation resources because it um, talks to the simulation API directly. Um, the best way to look at how the Kiwi proxy works uh, is through an example. So please start. And in this example, what we're going to do is first, we're going to connect requirement one to test case one so using the relationship um, validated by. And uh, when we are going to connect, um, just I'll just take 20 seconds. There's an aircraft flying. It's actually a jet. I, uh, I'm near an airport and it's gone. So now I can start uh, continue. So since uh, we are going to be creating a relationship from a requirement resource to the test case resource, we will be dealing with the Kiwi proxy that is in parallel to the requirement API. So when we, uh, what, how we'll um, create a link to the requirement is by sending a put request to the Kiwi proxy that uh, runs parallel to the requirement API. And um, this is the put request that we'll be sending. We'll be saying, uh, please relink the first requirement resource with the first test case resource using um, this relationship that is validated by. Now the Kiwi proxy, when it gets this uh, request, what it will do is it will simply forward this request to the requirement API. And here we can see that the Kiwi proxy acts as a port forwarder. It just forwarding the request it gets. The requirement um, API would send an invalid response. And why is that? That is because validated by is not already, is not a feature of requirement resource. Therefore, it cannot be updated. Um, let's have a look ourselves. This is uh, the requirement endpoint. And what we are going to do is we are going to directly try and um, update uh, the first requirement uh, through the requirement API directly and not through the KV, KV proxy. So, I send the same risk request and I get a not found error. So this not found error is Kiwi proxy also gets this four not four error. And then the Kiwi proxy realizes, oh, okay, that this actually is a linking request. So what the Kiwi proxy does is then creates the corresponding link. And once the link has been created, the Kiwi proxy lets us know that the link has been created. Um, now let's look at this slide. So here is the requirement proxy, meaning the Kiwi proxy that runs parallel to the requirement API. And this, this is the endpoint and we're going to be sending the same request. Let's send and yay, we see that uh, we get a link created response. Let's also create another link between test case one and simulation one. And since we are creating a relationship from the test case resource, we will be dealing with the um, Kiwi proxy that runs uh, parallel to the test case API, therefore the test case Kiwi proxy. So for that, uh, the test case Kiwi proxy, this is the endpoint. And since you want to connect the first resource, we will send it at this address and we will send a put request. And let's do a send. And we see that the link has been created. This is great. Uh, we see that uh, the link has been created, but where is this link created? It's obviously created in a link store. Um, for our demo today, we have used a Neo4j graph database um, to um, store our links. And uh, this, what you're seeing on the screen is the Neo4j browser. So it's like a, a Neo4j interface that allows you to 
send queries to the database. And here, this query here is a cipher query. And what this query basically means is, please return to me all your um, components and the relationships between them. So let's execute this and see what we get. Yes, and there we have it. We have our requirement um, resource connected to a test case resource and that to the simulation resource. And when we um, click on any component here, we also get the URI. So we can directly um, access these resources from the link store also. Um, similarly, these UI, URIs are uh, there for the test case and um, simulation API resources. So I said that Kiwi Proxy um, provides two endpoints. We already saw how the Kiwi Proxy provides the um, link creation endpoint. Let's have a look at um, the link discovery Kiwi Proxy, uh, that the link discovery endpoint that the Kiwi Proxy provides. Now, link discovery means you're reading data. Therefore, the Kiwi Proxy exposes a get endpoint for this. Again, I'm sorry, I have to pause for 10 seconds. Then aircraft is well flying. <laughs> and done. Um, so what the Kiwi proxy does is when it gets this request, it again forwards um, the get request to its own API. It um, keeps that response. And additionally, the Kiwi proxy also asks the link store, um, you know, are there any um, resources linked to this particular resource? And if there are, the link store also gives the response. And then the Kiwi proxy gives us both the responses together. Let's have a look. So this is our um, um, test case proxy endpoint. And here, when we do a get on the first resource, we see that we get a combination of two resources. This original resource uh, response comes from the test case API. And with it comes the key response that um, tells you what is linked to the first, to this um, test case resource. Here we see it's, uh, a simulation model um, resources link, and we can access that uh, at the URI is also given, and also the relationship with which it is linked. That's the link type is also given. Let's also see if our requirement, um, let's see what we get when we do, uh, let's see what information we get, get when we send a get request to the first uh, requirement through the uh, requirement proxy. Here, again, we see the original response that comes from the requirement API and along with it, the Kiwi response that comes from the link store. So these relationships we have uh, created and we can see that we can also read these relationships via the same proxy, except the endpoints are different. Um, at the start of the presentation, um, I started with why we should connect data. And the answer that I was, I said, one of the main important reasons is to build nonlinear CI CD pipelines. And this is the next uh, demo element uh, for today's presentation. Um, we have programmed the Kiwi proxy to trigger a pipeline that uh, updates the status of the test case if um, there is a change in requirement and if that requirement is linked to any test case. So if there's a change in requirement, the Kiwi proxy triggers a pipeline that identifies any test cases, uh, if there are, to this to the particular requirement. And uh, if there are uh, linked test cases, it makes sure that the status of the test case is up to date. So let's do a demo. Uh, when I'm changing uh, some value on the requirement, what I'll be doing, uh, is I will be doing a put request, but instead of doing it to the requirement API, I'm gonna be sending this put at the um, Kiwi proxy that runs parallel to the requirement API. So what I'm gonna do is we know that velocity is a feature and I'm gonna set it to a very, very high value, a value that is not uh, possible in the simulation model. So what I do is I do a put and I see that um, the velocity has been updated. Now, this is a very high value that wouldn't be there in the simulation model. We know that the first requirement is linked to the first test case. So let's see what, um, let's see if the status of the test case has been updated. We do a send at the test case endpoint and we see that the status has failed. 
So this status was set because um, Kiwi proxy tr triggered a CICD pipeline just as soon as the velocity of the uh, requirement changed. Um, let's go back and change the velocity to its uh, back back to this value. So this value has been very carefully chosen because we know that in the first simulation at time 0 0.12, the actual value of velocity is this. So when I'm changing the velocity value to minus 1.17, what I'm expecting now is for the test case to pass. Let's see if my expectations are met. I do a put again at the same endpoint and the velocity is set back to its original value. I go to the test case API, again, see if the test case status has changed and it has. Ta -ta -da. That is, this is what we are trying to do here. And uh, um, this has happened. Uh, so this was the end of the demo. Um, what we saw in the demo uh, is that we saw Kiwi overcome some challenges that uh, a very big challenge that we face when we are trying to connect REST API resources. And this challenge is that REST APIs do not allow um, the modification of the resources in such a way that we can link new resources to it because they confirm to specific schemas. And uh, uh, when I showed the first link, uh, creation endpoint, I showed uh, how what response we get when we try to directly link to the REST API. We get a 404 not found. I mean, we get an invalid request response. So REST APIs do not allow the modification of uh, resources. Um, they do not have endpoints that allow the linking of other resources to their own resources. And this is what Kiwi overcomes. Other thing, other features of Kiwi include uh, its ability uh, to have centrally defined linking rules to avoid chaos. And uh, Kiwi also has a centralized link store. The uh, graph database that we saw uh, was central in one place. And all of this link store and linking rules and the Kiwi proxies that are deployed, all of this management also happens um, centrally. How? Um, the answer is the Kiwi control plane. Um, the Kiwi control plane can be thought of as the command center for Kiwi. And Kiwi control plane is in charge of um, managing the link store and the linking rules. Now, earlier I said that, oh, you know, the Kiwi proxy creates a link and the Kiwi proxy reads from the link store, but that is not entirely true. Whenever Kiwi proxy realizes that it has got a linking um, um, request or a link discovery or link creation request, what it does is it forwards it to the Kiwi control plane. That is the Kiwi command center here. And Kiwi uh, control plane, if the Kiwi control plane gets a linking link creation request, then the Kiwi control plane um, creates a, creates um, the link if and only if it is within the linking rules. What are the linking rules? Um, linking rules are user-defined rules that tell um, Kiwi what resources can be linked to which resources. And um, simply they're just, uh, uh, linking rules are just a um, JSON dictionary. So here um, on the left, we can see the linking rules that we used for our demo. Let's look at the first item here. In the first item here, what we're doing is the first item, what this linking rule means is that any requirement resource can be connected to any um, test case resource um, using this relationship, using this link type that is validated by. There is another um, key value pair here that is multiplicity. Multiplicity means, um, just give me 10 seconds, yeah. Multiplicity is, um, here the multiplicity is set to n. What this means is that one requirement resource can be linked to multiple test case resources. If we wanted one requirement resource to be linked to only one test case resource, then we would set the multiplicity to one. Um, another thing here is, um, so I said, um, another thing, another very important thing is that the Kiwi control plane is the only component in Kiwi that has right access to the link store. So only Kiwi control plane can um, create links uh, whenever it wants. Let's, um, I just wanted, I want to show you that uh, whatever uh, links we made, uh, they were within the linking rules. 
let's see what happens when we do when we send uh, invalid uh, linking uh, requests that are outside the linking rules let's have a look then see how kiwi responds so um, this is the test case endpoint and we will try and connect simulation resource one using a random relationship that is not defined in the linking rules and we will do a put and see what happens and it's you get not found it's not uh, not going to happen so let's again see this time the relationship is valid simulation model as this link type is valid the link source is also valid because this in fact is the test case uh, proxy endpoint and this endpoint does exist what we're going to do is we're going to put an invalid link target so we are saying that yeah this is uh, it's the 43rd uh, simulation resource but we already know that we only have five simulation resources so this link target doesn't actually exist so let's see what um, kiwi does when we send this we get a not found let's do one thing let's link um let's now link uh, the first uh, test case with maybe the fourth simulation model and see if that goes through because this again is within the linking rules let's have a look and yes link is created let's head over to our um, graph database to see if this link was created and yeah it has been created earlier test case was just linked to uh, one simulation model but now it's also linked to the um, it's linked to two simulation models the first and the fourth we need we need to wrap up yeah um yes i can um uh, can you tell me how much time i have left well you are over time basically so you need you need to wrap up and maybe okay, okay i will just uh, quickly go to this kiwi is built on um, kubernetes kubernetes is a uh, containerized cloud deployment platform and uh, it's heavily in inspired by istio service mesh i'll just skip to the end uh, this uh, is so right now kiwi has certain limitations and these limitations are that kiwi is only available for rest apis that live on the kubernetes um, cluster and in the demo i showed all the rest apis that uh, the rest apis that i showed in the demo they all were in part of the same cluster so we want to see if we can take kiwi to other applications that are deployed outside kubernetes cluster and also see if we can um, connect resources cross cross uh, across clusters and my summary is uh, with this that kiwi connects rest api resources without any modification to the res uh, resources it's heavily inspired by Istio service mesh architecture and the limitation of Kiwi is that it's only available uh, at the moment if your REST APIs, uh, for your REST APIs, if they live on Kubernetes. Thank you so much. Um, please um, feel free to get in touch with me if you want to know more. We'll be putting out demo videos soon and uh, that is it. Also, while I'm um, heavily involved in the development of Kiwi, this is actually Axel's brainchild. Axel is the CEO of Connexus. And he has helped and mentored me uh, throughout the process yeah. to build this. Thank we know you so how much. To Don't worry, we know how to find you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. That, uh, that's it. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mlata. There is one comment uh, question which I also wanted to ask. Okay. Is, uh, is uh, rather than uh, you have those uh, sort of uh, proprietary uh, rule schemas, uh, have you considered to use the OSC shapes to look into? No. The so with this, what we're trying to do is OSLC is one way to link data. This we think is a much simpler way to link data. So we are trying, so it links data, but without the need for OSLC. Okay. So we've not considered using OSLC resource shapes, no. Okay. Not yet, at least, but I think this is still a work in progress. And as this is like, you know, the research uh, part of it, I think maybe later if we need to get that involved, maybe we will, if there's a requirement. Okay, thank you very much.